you, but I want you to hear from a man who has flown all across the globe. Our guest today is a TWA pilot who's flown 17,000 hours and landed in about every major city on this planet. But I want you to hear what happened when he, his plane flew 135 miles an hour into a 70-foot monument. No one survived except him. And I want you to hear him describe flying into the holy city of God. Watch this first. For 40 years he has been a commercial pilot, uh, flew for many years for a major uh, commercial airline. He's flown everything from 747s to Cessnas, everything in between. At age 19 he survived a plane crash that uh, killed the other two men in the cockpit. But you hit right near the top and, you f and then you free fell 75 feet. You hit it at 135 miles an hour. Now there's a plane down at the bottom. And the fact that you are standing or sitting across from me right now is, is an amazement. They classified it as non-survivable. There was some bystanders that came by and saw all three pilots laying there motionless and one was clearly dead. The other two appeared dead and uh, there was fuel and toxic fumes everywhere. You were severely injured. They, they, they rushed you to the hospital. Um, they didn't figure you were going to live. I get into the emergency room. I'm literally away from my body, Jim, if that makes any sense. Yeah. I'm, but I'm obviously not dead because I've never felt more alive. It's impossible to prove, but one thing I can say is I've never been the same. My life has always beat on a different drum, and it's because of this experience that we're talking about. Help me welcome Captain Dale Black. You know, uh, Dale, it's been so fun. Uh, we, we've, we've hung out the last day or so, and uh, just, you know, you, I mean, you, you, you are a captain, you're an engineer, mind, and have run, uh, have run multi-million dollar businesses uh, in the airline industry, um, and yet this experience uh, has defined your life, hasn't it? That's an understatement, but yes, it is true. <laughs> so take, true. take us back to that day. That was the very plane yes. uh, that yeah. took the lives of the other two pilots with you. Yeah. Um, what, what, hap what do you remember after that crash? I hovered above the crash site, watching, learning, asking questions, followed the ambulance. My body was put in the ambulance, raced to the uh, hospital, even though they thought I was dead to begin with. Their life, life came back in me. I went into the uh, hospital, but not in my body, but above it. In the emergency room, they were working on me, uh, doctors and nurses cutting my gray slacks and shirt off. I was all bloodied, and I was a pretty much of a mess. But I watched this from what looked like a bird's eye view, and I saw all the commotion going on. I'm asking questions. Uh, I had this life review of one moment in my life. Not all my life, just one moment of my life. And it was when I was in the fifth grade where I had uh, prayed to receive Jesus into my heart as a young 11 and 12 year old kid. And uh, I was full of zeal for God at that time, wanted to live for Him with my life, and I was genuine and sincere. But when this flashback took place in the emergency room, when I was in this accident, I realized that I was no longer that young kid who loved God. I was a kid who had kind of lost my way and uh, loved my life and loved my goals and my dreams because it was all about me. It was all about what I wanted, not what God wanted. And I was sad about what had become of me. <laughs> I mean, I still knew God. I still knew there was a God. And I did know that Jesus was his Savior. But I had lost my way along the path of living for myself. And, uh, but the grief and all suddenly uh, departed. And I moved out of the hospital into a deep outer space. Uh, long story there, it's in the book, of course, but I saw this city of gold uh, in quickly, uh, this golden, brilliant, uh, it, it was white light in the center, but it moved out and it was a, 
a ball of heavy, thick gold light. And all the colors in the rainbow were in the white, but what I saw was the white and the gold. And as I got closer and closer, uh, Pastor John, I, I knew that this was the city, a holy city. I knew I was in heaven. You're, I, you're looking, you're coming, like flying into a city. Yeah, yeah, flying into a city, uh, approaching uh, and decelerating and descending. Why God would oh, do that? Only God for me. would do that for a pilot, right? <laughs> it's, Does that mean I'm going to be kicking a soccer ball through the gate? <laughs> it, it, it means that we're going to have to go through flying lessons here pretty soon. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll help. No, but that's that's just so yeah. fascinating. It's and and you, so you're. It, it, did it feel like flying? I mean, no. There was no sensations of g-forces or or uh, uh, physical distortion of the eyes squinting. None of that. There was no discomfort in in any way. But but travel was extremely fast, and then it began to slow down as I got near what I called the city of God. The, I, I knew it was the city of God, and I knew God reigned here. But He was in the light. And it was on the other side, there was a, a wall around the city. How big was the city? Uh, the city was huge, way larger than anything like Paris or London or Beijing or anything, Mexico City, way bigger than that. And what, what I saw, and I'm able to kind of quickly judge distances, you know, because you're trained to do that, but about 40 miles into the city, way back beyond the wall, uh, there was an event going on that is, uh, it's easy to describe when I write it, you know, because I can write better than I can speak, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> but there was, of course, the mountains and the flowers and the air, all the things that uh, you've mentioned before. But there was this humongous, crowd of people and angels that I was able to see from a long, long way away. Over, I was looking over the wall, but still on the outside of the city. And this group of people and angels were moving with the music, and they were moving in praise and swaying with the music, and talk about oneness and unity and love. There, there's life in music. There, there is, there, the light is full of life and, and love, and it's light that's palpable. It's thick. It, it's, uh, it has substance and weight to it, and all the colors in the rainbow are in it. But that light, and I knew it was coming from God. I, I knew it. Everybody knew it. Everybody knew this was God. I mean. It's like you would say here on the earth, well, duh, you know. <laughs> it's God. The light comes from God, but in that light is the love of God. <laughs> How do you describe the love of God? Well, you spend a lifetime trying to do that. Mm. It's unconditional love. It's not based on who you are, what skills or talents you have, how much money or success you have. It's based on just the fact that you and I are the creation of God and He loves us. He loved me and I could hardly... I told myself I wouldn't cry this time. <laughs> you know what? I... You know, you know what's so awesome? <laughs> You're gonna make me cry. I try to stop it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I you couple know. of engineers. <laughs> <laughs> but couple you of know, engineers crying. Every time oh you talk God. about this, <laughs> it comes from so deep within you, doesn't it? It does because it's the spirit of God inside the spirit of His children, and I'm just one. But it's God who's alive, who has created us in His image. And when we get out of the way and we let the Spirit of God in us, then we can reflect His light and His love and His life in this world. And that's how we can conquer disease and that's how we can conquer darkness in this world because it's the light of God in us. It's the love of God in us. 
And it's that life of God, and it all comes from Him, like you were preaching so well earlier. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's mop up. <laughs> We really are engineers. <laughs> yeah. yeah, as funny as that okay, is. Okay, so, so I want you to describe, since we're talking about the beauty, the beauty of the surrounding landscape around this city and in the city. And the funniest like. thing is you're asking me who, you know, I grew up with machines and I, I enjoy machinery. And, and then there's nothing like that in heaven, of course. There's, no, there's nothing mechanical there that I was aware of or never saw. But it's all made by God and it's all made into perfection. Uh, how do you describe it? it? Everything's perfect. I remember the first thing I noticed uh, coming into the city was, if I may, just the grass. The, the grass was so incredible. Uh, I mean, it, it just, it was an aha moment, we would say. I just took my breath away because I, I never seen grass that was wild and perfectly manicured, yet mankind, no human being, no angel had had to touch it. Light came through the grass from the source of the light, which is God himself. It pulsated in the, in the grass itself. Every blade was not met, bent or twisted. It was perfection. It looked more like velvet. And that's just the grass. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you know what's so... So many people talk about the same, the grass. And they can't stop describing yeah. it. Yeah. And yeah. it's like, wow. I mean... It's you know, crazy. I was seared by this experience a few years after the crash. I had to find some kind of job to pay for my flight training lessons. And it just so happened God had me become a golf course greens consultant. <laughs> <laughs> So for a just year to rub half. it in, like, yeah. this is not yeah. even close. I would so. just rub that grass all day. Yeah, it was weird, but true story. I, a year and a half of my life was, uh, was spent with grass on golf courses. <laughs> That's just one story. So you told me as you were flying in, back behind the city was a mountain range. Yeah, beautiful mountains, very much like these that you just showed, but uh, not mountains you would want to conquer in any way, but mountains you would just revere. What do you mean? Because of the majesticness that God created. You just look at the mountains and just go, oh, wow, oh my gosh. But maybe unlike you, because you might be there when you're there, you might look at the mountains and take more time to do so, but I was more interested in what was happening with the people, the, the God's creation. And you came down then onto the path and there were people there. Yeah. Talk about yeah. that. There's a path, there was a path that I was moving uh, on and uh, there's people to the left that were just congregating. They were just gathering. In fact, it looked like a few of them were just getting in place just as I arrived. And it made me think, rightfully so, I found out, that they were getting there to welcome me, to be there just when I needed them to be there. And I looked at these uh, wonderful people that were brilliantly lit with their uh, bright eyes and great smiles with genuine hearts. By the way, all of the light is still coming from God through the wall, through the people, through me. And these people were, at this point, I saw family later, but at this point, it was important, I think, that God had me welcomed by the most wonderful, loving, kindness people ever. And yet none were, were what we would call blood family. And when I discussed this quickly through my heart to my guides, the information came to me very quickly from heart to head that this was my f real family. This was my spiritual family. These are my brothers. These are my sisters. Mm. And everybody was about the same age. Nobody was old or decrepit. There was no, you know, nothing wrong with anybody. No, no scars. So hide mine here. And, and everybody looked about your age, if I may say. No, no, no. <laughs> I joke, I joke to them uh, we want 30. earlier. 30. But yeah, they 29 looked 30. is what I'm going for. <laughs> yeah, I'll go with that. But yeah, they looked around at 30-ish, you know, in that uh, era. And 
it was clear that the most important family is my spiritual brothers and sisters, and there's millions, millions, hundreds of millions. If you don't have family, you will love heaven <laughs> because you have millions waiting for you. And others have family in heaven already. And the great news about that is we'll be able to, uh, you know, connect again and have this wonderful fellowship with our family at the, from the blood. But the blood family on earth is not like it is in heaven. We're all blood family. It's the blood of Jesus. We're all bonded together. And it's beyond words. <laughs> it's wonderful beyond words. Well, and, and we had a chance to sit down yesterday. And <laughs> Dale has so much more to, to tell. And in the, in the weeks to come, you're going to hear, because he went through that gate and met some blood relatives you did, had never met before. Yeah. And then saw the one who clearly took your breath away. And, and so we're going we're gonna to hear more. So stick with us. Come back. Um, but let's thank Captain Dale Black. Thank you.